What up, people? I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to be doing a another Wireshark video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you another one of my favorite places to go to when I'm trying to learn about a capture. And that is the input-output graph. So I know it's not a very exciting name. But for me, it's, it is interesting. <laughs> and the reason for that is that I'm a very visual learner. When I look at my PCAPs here, I do like to have the color, have it be colorful because it certain things will jump out of me. I've, I've custom built this profile to be that way. Well, what does it all mean? Using the input output graph can actually put it into perspective and be like, okay, at this point in time, this giant surge of traffic happened. What does that mean? Okay, well, let's look at something else. What happened after that giant surge of traffic? What's really going on here? On your screen, we have a capture that I've used in the previous video when I was talking about protocol hierarchy. I actually have uh, some malware that has been downloaded. And so we're going to use the input output graphs to actually visualize what's actually happening inside of this capture. But let's go and jump on over to our to our statistics window and take a look at the input output graph. So we go to statistics and then we go down to input output graph. Now on the screen we've got our input output graph window. And below here, we actually have a, a bunch of filters that you can add yourself. So now in my security profile, I have some custom filters that I've actually put in there that I have found to be extremely useful. Let's take a look at this filter down here. It's a all packets and the display filter is TCP. The filters here work exactly the same as in your display filter when we're looking at that list window. You can display whatever you want. So I'm going to click on the TCP, and it's going to go, and it's going to do its work. And we can see right away that this dark line is showing us all of the traffic that's TCP related. We have a beginning, and then we have uh, nothing happening, then a, a little bump of traffic there, another little bump of traffic there. But right over here, we actually have... A, a lot of traffic that happened and it's TCP specific. We can see it goes from zero and jumps all the way to 2,788. If you can see on the bottom left there, just above the filters, we can see the, the number of, of packets. As you hover along the line, you can see that it will tell you how many packets. So over here, I'm in this next this bump here and we've got 72 packets. Let's go to that bump there, we got 66. Well, what is happening that is causing that giant surge of traffic? Is that you can actually select moments in time on the on the graph here, and it will bring you, you can see the colors changing behind the window, it will bring you to wherever that packet is. So if I want to know what happened just before that massive surge or how about let's go right at the beginning of that surge it'll bring us to to show us that we actually have a tremendous amount of traffic coming from 10 to 8 101 towards a anybody else something interesting can happen and i'm going to show you a cool thing about input output graphs right now we've seen that i can i can locate particular spots in this capture based on time interval i can click on it and literally get there now let's modify our display filter on our list window that's the colorful stuff behind and then go back and take a look at our, our input output graph and see what changes and i'm going to create a display filter where i have this particular ip address as the source ip address so it's super easy in wireshark i love it right click and go on down to apply as filter, and then I'm gonna to go to selected. That goes through the entire 20,000 packets and filters out only the packets that have IP source 10 to 8 101. Beautiful. So now that I've got that filter made, let's go back and open up the statistics window and see how the input output graph has changed. Let's expand this a little bit. And now on the bottom here, we actually have that filter that we just made. 
Now this is this is the glory of the input output graph in that I can I can really get a good look at what's happening. I'm going to remove or deselect the TCP packets. Okay, that's removed, and all that's left is that current filter. But look at what look at what's similar between these two these two uh, filters, TCP and only coming from that machine. It's it's curious how the spikes directly match. What that means is that of the total, so that, that dark one right here, we have a certain number of those, close to half um, in this particular case, are all coming from the source of 10 to 8, 101. All the other traffic could be coming from different machines at this point. But that's, that's what the, the filter here is telling us. So let's go and take a look here at our, our huge spike of traffic. There's a direct connection here. And this machine that we're digging into is a, a large portion of the overall TCP traffic that's happening at that exact moment. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think it's interesting. For a visual learner like myself, this is super helpful to, to understand. So now, inside of your input output graphs, you can create a filter and have it be associated with a, a security profile or a Wireshark profile. Because every time you load up that profile, it's going to load up the filters that you think are really important. I've got a couple in here that are really, really interesting. This capture or this filter right here shows only private network space so that's 192 and a 10 so that would be class a and class c this would be all traffic that's going out i got another one that's just a little bit different where it's now it's only traffic that's coming from a private network to another machine that's in the private network i really like this first one here because it can show us like at points in time of this capture, when was the most external directed traffic actually occurring? Let's turn on this particular filter here, the internal communicating with the external. And I mean, you can't see it so great because they're, they're so entwined. My, the coloring for this particular filter here is a light blue. I like the light blue, but you can change the color. Double click on it and then choose another color. I'm going to choose something else that looks okay on YouTube. Let's go with this one. I don't know what the name of that one. Pink, purple, looks the same. Uh, shows up a little bit better. So remember, this line here is our traffic that is associated with the 10 to 8 101. And now look how close these lines are connected. There's almost no difference between these two here. Let's zoom out. This is literally telling us that this traffic that's coming from this machine, we know it's that big spike. We know now, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that that traffic is actually going outside of the network. Let's add some more filters that can reveal more information. I'm actually gonna go ahead and add here a filter that you should consider having as a, a permanent input output uh, filter to, to look at because it's extremely helpful and it's the ARP protocol. I leave that one accessible all the time. So let's go ahead and select it. Interesting happens. We have over here ARP as nothing, it's zero. And that's that's okay. And let's go along, go along, go along, go along, go along, go along. And then, boop, all of a sudden, we've got a surge of ARP packets that are happening, and then it drops down. I mean, this could be a variety of things. But when you compare this ARP traffic to the rest of it, something interesting is happening at that particular moment. We also have another interesting filter that we can actually add to Wireshark. Let's do this one here. So that would be packet 15, 593, and I like to write it down. 
let's go over to packet um, 17725. And I have it over here in my L1, so layer one, and I'm gonna do a frame range. Very, very helpful because sometimes there's a range <laughs> and I wanna know what happened between this point and that point. So let's put in the first number. Remember, it was 15,593, 15,593, and the second number was 17,725, 17,725. Hit enter, and it's literally gonna do exactly what I asked. We've got 15,593, and if you go all the way down, we've got 17,725. Now what else can we do with that? Remember, if we looked at our input output graph here. I wanted to look at ARP stuff. All right, well, let's modify our filter to look specifically at ARP traffic that's happening there. Put an open bracket there. We're going to close it. Green means it likes it. And I'm going to say, and the ARP protocol. Bingo, bango, hit that enter button. And now we have from that range that was given only the ARP traffic. Well, 8.201 sent out a broadcast and it's saying, tell me 8.28101, who has 8.1? Who has 8.3.4.7.6.8.10? It wants to know everybody on the network. Yes, it is weird. <laughs> and it is can be associated with a, a network scan. Another way we can validate that something bizarro is going on is if we go to our main window here, if I slide over to the left here and I look at our delta, we can see that we've got a very small amount of time in between each of these. So it's 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 like a rapid fire. <laughs> firing out these ARP packets to figure out everybody on the network. Now, standard network scans, like basic ones, are gonna be sending SYN packets out to all those machines. Okay, I'm going to turn off traffic going out. I don't need to know that right now. I'm gonna leave ARP on because that shows me the, that point in time when I think maybe a scan happened. I don't know, we'll see. Um, we do have traffic here that is saying this purple line here is the 128101. But let's modify that particular packet and say and TCP flags. And we can choose sim equal equal one. Let's see how this this graph changes. Changes a little bit. It's saying that they're, they're the source IP and the this the the TCP header should have a SIM flag turned on. We really don't have much of that going on. And if this was a network scan, we would actually see uh, a, many spikes of TCP traffic happening, resets happening, SIN acts happening, but we would also see a lot of sins happening coming from this particular machine. What does this filter tell us? <laughs> it tells us that this is a very unique behavior in the network. Our, our compromised machine, because we can make that assumption now, is sending out an art blast to figure out who's on the network, and then it just stops. Why does it stop? I mean, that's that's where the threat hunting and the the sleuthing comes into play um uh, yeah so this is this is the glory of using the input output graphs it's extremely useful gives you a visual idea of what's going on inside this network when did it happen it allows us to select and click into specific spots to zero in on it and get a general idea of like what's going on Awesome. Hey, if you're enjoying my videos, please go ahead and watch these other two videos that are on the screen. I think you're going to like them. And thanks again for your support. And see you next time.